The power of a toy. It can ignite the imagination of a child. Or fuel the crazy. I need the Xbox. Of parents desperate to get their hands on the hard to get varieties. <laughs> While many rack up their 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> Others never really go out of style. Or frustration. Rubik's Cube, anyone? Legos consistently make the top seller list. Also one of the top 10 of all time. Joining these other household hits. Toys are a $90 billion worldwide industry. Americans dished out $27 billion in 2019. Here in Massachusetts, the industry's economic impact is more than $3 billion each year. But early roots of the toy industry can be found in the most understated and bucolic of places, where the echo of toy making dates back to the pre-Civil War era. Wow. This is the last surviving toy and block shop in America. One of the first toy manufacturers in the United States, in our own backyard, Hingham, Mass, on a multi-generational farm. The shop as fascinating as the story behind it. It was all covered with vines. The windows were knocked out. The chimney was knocked out. It was like the Leaning Tower of Pizza. In 2006, Peter Hersey was settling his parents' estate, a process that began in this old shed. Despite growing up here, he never stepped foot inside, and neither did anyone else, not even a peek. We were never allowed to play in it as kids. It was a big no. Well, my father was in World War II. When you gave an order because he was in patents unit, the answer was no meant no. <laughs> Under lock and key for more than a century. My grandfather locked the building when his father died, who was the toy maker. It was basically a gem that was lost. It's a time capsule in time, which is why none of the uh, experts knew it existed and none of the experts knew the toy industry really started in Hingham, Massachusetts. Inside, completely preserved building blocks of toy history, from the original paintbrushes to tools and countless wooden trinkets. Hingham has long been known for its early woodenware history, leading to the nickname Bucket Town. But when steam power shifted production, many Coopers, including Reuben Hersey, turned to toys. It was determined that the shop was the last surviving pre-industrial toy shop in the country. So the shop contains the original raw materials, the original account books, the original tools. From buckets to the miniature version, butter churns, beds, and tiny elements of everyday life. This is amazing, like a little water bucket. Incredible details. So this would have been in a dollhouse. In a dollhouse, in the kitchen. And they're all still in there? Still in there. This is amazing. Unearthing a story of a time when patience and skill served up ingenuity. You scoop the sand up. You put it in there. There's only three known. I own two in the Shelburne Museum, owns one. Peter says the discovery of the toy shop brought him closer to his own personal family history. It's clearly emotional. This is Reuben Hersey's toy chest, his box chest he did all his work in. And after hiring historians and discussions with countless museums, a new outlook on old beginnings. And we came to the conclusion the organized toy industry in America started here in Hingham with the wooden toys long before the cast iron toys. It may have started here, but head west for a look at how far toy manufacturing has come. Inside this one million square foot facility in East Long Meadow, they are spinning out some of the world's most iconic games. We make Play Doh, you know, Monopoly, Battleship, Sorry, Trouble. Once home to Milton Bradley, passing through the hands of Hasbro and now Cardamundi. 500 employees with one mission. At the end of the day, what we do makes people smile. The process is high tech. These machines are capable of making a board game every 1.5 seconds. We have high-speed automated printing presses and they run at very, very high speeds. Um, and we print every single thing that's inside of a game or the, you know, right to the box covers. But the ingredients for Play-Doh still boil down to flour and water. We built our Play-Doh line a couple of years ago. It's mm -hmm. a big vat and it all comes down. It looks like a huge bakery except it's all very colorful and all very pretty. 50 different shades with countless possibilities. The only missing ingredient you add at home. 
imagination. Most games, it teaches people something and it teaches them in a way that is fun and it's, it's enjoyable for families to come together. And Cardamundi prints more money than the U.S. Mint every year. Monopoly money, of course. The company also makes the iconic bicycle playing card, first developed in 1885. Much more information about all of this on our Chronicle podcast. And back to Hersey Farm, you can read about the history of Hingham Coopers in a book called Bucket Town. Up next, this is definitely a 2020 toy.